Thanks, Fran. Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> it's good to have you here. I'm John Eby. I'm a resident here at Landis Homes in Hybrid 3. I heard a pastor once say that we should live a life fit for the heaven now so that when we get there, we do not need to make major adjustments. The passage I'm going to use today points that direction also. It's from Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah sketches a compelling vision. In his time, it was believed that different 
uh, gods functioned in different spheres of life and that all gods competed for supremacy. Isaiah claims that the Lord's mountain is the highest. When the nations recognize that, they will go to that mountain for instructions on how to live. That's a revolutionary claim. Isaiah suggests that the place to look for practical wisdom for everyday life is his God. And for us, that means the God we know through Jesus. Join me as I read Isaiah chapter 2 from the New International Version. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up nation, I'm sorry. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, for they are full of diviners from the east and of soothsayers like the Philistines, and they clasp hands with foreigners. Their land is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is filled with idols, and they bow down to work of their hands, to what their own fingers have made. And so people are humbled, and everyone is brought low. Do not forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty. The haughty eyes of people shall be brought low and the pride of everyone shall be humbled and the Lord alone shall be exalted on that day. For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up and high, against all the cedars of Lebanon, lofty and lifted up, and against the oaks of Bashan, against all the high mountains and against all the lofty hills, against every high tower and against every fortified wall, against all the ships of Tarshish and against all the highly prized vessels, the haughtiness of people shall be humbled and the pride of everyone shall be brought low and the Lord alone shall be exalted on that day. He would use different images if he were to write today, but the message is as significant and relevant and revolutionary today as it was when he wrote. What the Lord teaches is a new vision which replaces the common assumption that war and violence are needed for protection. A new world where conspiracy theories and the lives of politicians do not substitute for real facts. Isaiah envisions a world in which disputes are resolved righteously and where resources are directed to provide food and housing for everyone. A, war, a world where the guns that individuals own are beaten into useful tools. This is indeed revolutionary. Can you imagine if only a small portion of our military budget and what people pay for guns and what's invested in political campaigns would be devoted to projects that reduce poverty and increase welfare of people around the world? This is the vision that we should use to replace 
the self-serving message of some Christians and of many persons today. There is a sense in which what Isaiah envisions can be now, but it is also not yet. Its fullest expression will happen when Jesus comes and when we are invited to let that vision inform us and shape how we live now. We frequently pray that God's will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's precisely what Isaiah is suggesting in this passage. Can we envision and help shape a world where the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. What can we do today to make that happen where we live? Our God, you have called us to a lofty vision. You are the God that is above every God, above the gods that we tend to give our loyalties, above the gods that we tend to trust. You are above all those gods. Today, we pray for your grace, your love, your care in this community. Help us to be the kind of people that you want us to become and help us to be ministers to each other as we grow in faith and understanding. And we do confess you as the God above all gods, the God to whom we give our loyalties, the God whom we follow in our life today. We pray for peace in our world. Somehow bring sense and reason to the leaders who are contesting various things in various places of our world and give each of us opportunities and then the ability and the incentive to be your ministers of love and care in our community and in our world today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>